Hello and welcome to another add-on guide. This time we're going to be looking at Trade Skill Master, the very, very useful auctioning add-on as well. So let's go and have a look at Trade Skill Master over here. And now this is going to be a pretty basic guide because it's got a lot to it. And what I mainly want to show you is how you go about setting up a group and a condition so you can start using this add-on. And I find that generally once you've kind of started with it and you know sort of how more or less some of it works, you'll be able to do quite a lot of stuff on your own. So let's get started and have a look at this fantastic add-on. So we're going to go and click on over to groups after we've opened up Trade Skill Master. You can use other buttons, but generally I've got this little slide bar and I like to click that there and get it up. Okay, so now we've got all of these different groups. Now basically what you do with a group is you tell this add-on Okay, these items go on this shelf. This is the 100 gold shelf, basically, you tell this add-on. And then it will say, okay, this is the 100 gold shelf, and we have these add-ons on the 100 gold shelf. And then it is happy, and it will do its thing, and it will allow you to post items and, and do all its kind of the crazy stuff that it does using your lovely little shelf that it creates. So basically, think of a group as kind of a little chest filled with stuff that is all the same and sold at the same kind of price in the same way and that's basically what you're going to be doing. Certain items, for example, a lot of most gems basically will be pretty much in the same price range and you can pretty much keep them all in one kind of group or you can have a couple of groups but for the most part things like gems can be nicely grouped together. For other items, more unique items, gear for example, you may want specific groups per individual item and it sounds like a lot of work but generally it'll save you in the long run. So let's go and have a look at how to make a group. So we're going to select the group over here, groups, and then we are going to create a new group and we're going to type in the group name and let's go and have a look at what item I want to create this for. Let's create it for this piece of gear and that is a Stormbreaker chest guard and basically I am just going to call it, um, I can even shift click that in, in fact, and then that will be the group name. Okay, then we've got the group name sorted, and we now have the options for the group. So we've got a whole bunch of different things. You've got shopping, mailing, crafting, and auctioning. Now, shopping, mailing, and crafting, we're not really going to go into in the specific guide. We will, however, be looking at auctioning. So let's go and have a look at that. Now, operation, basically, you've, for all of your groups, you have a different way of listing the items and what prices they will be going for and everything because Trade Skill Master automates a lot of that. So you're going to create an auctioning operation. There we go. And we're going to give this an operation name. You can make it the same as the group name. You can call it rainbows and unicorns, whatever you want. Totally up to you. It doesn't really matter too much. Generally, you kind of want to be able to identify what the condition is, because maybe you want to use the same condition on several groups. It's up to you. Anyway, so now we have a whole bunch of lovely little settings. So, we're going to go with match stack size. Okay, now, you can go with this or not. Basically, what this does is, some of you may know that when you post an item in stacks of 1, it will generally appear before the stacks of 20, even if the individual price is higher. For example, let's say that per item in the stack of 20, each item is one gold. And when you list the little stacks of one, you have them going for one gold, 50 silver. The little stacks of one, even though they're a higher price, will usually show up before the stacks of 20. That's just how the auctioning thing works. So what this is saying is knowing that, do I really want to undercut the stacks of one if I have a, a stack of 20 it doesn't really matter and, and all and all sorts of things like that um, basically I like to have it ticked because it makes sense and it works very very well you don't really have to understand it too much just take my word for it it should be quite okay and then we go over to post now with posting it's up to you if you're going to be taking the items off and reposting them a lot okay then you're going to want the duration at 12 hours if you're sort of posting them and then you just want to forget about them then you're going to be going for 24 or 48 hours totally up to you how much uh, or rather how long you want the things up there you can go with 12 hours if you're posting twice a day generally if you're posting once a day go with 24 hours if you're posting once every two days go with 48 hours so let's pick 
12 hours for this, I guess. And now, you've got the post cap and the stack size. The post cap is there to say, I want to post so many stacks of this item, because otherwise you might end up flooding the auction house with tons of these items that just won't sell because you have too many of them on the auction house. So you can limit how many different stacks you'll be posting with the post cap. And with something like this, it's generally something I'll only be selling one of at a time anyway, so I'm going to leave the post cap at one. And the stack size, it doesn't stack anyway, so let's leave the stack size at one. You could have it at 20, for example, if you were selling herbs and you wanted them in stacks of 20. And then you can use stack size as cap, for example, if you want to. Basically what that'll say is, say you want to list everything in stacks of 20. You have five stacks of 20 and one stack of 13, okay? It might sell the five stacks of 20 and then post one stack of 13 because it only has 13, so we'll use 13 as the maximum stack size and it'll be posting that anyway. You can use that for items that you're going to be posting in stacks larger than one. If it's not something you're posting in stacks larger than one, taking it or not taking it will make no difference whatsoever. Then you've got bid percentage. I wouldn't really worry too much about this. You can make the bid percentage closer or higher, or rather closer or further away from the buyout price. So if you like to have your bid much lower than the buyout, you'll be adjusting this percentage-wise, and you can make the buyout higher than the bid. Generally, I find I don't particularly like bids. I don't like the idea of gold getting away from me because of a bid, and I find that generally people don't bid on items because they want them right now, so I don't tend to worry too much about it. Then you have the posting price settings. Now, this is kind of weird, and I always get a little bit confused here, particularly with the stacks. So, Basically, you've got a whole bunch of different things. For one item, it's pretty simple. You've got the minimum price, the maximum price, and the normal price. Minimum price is if someone is trying to sell it for this amount, I will not go underneath that amount. I will not undercut them. I will not go underneath that because, say, if I sell it at that price, I will be making a loss. Or maybe that's just stupidly low and I would never sell it at that price. So, for example, let's say that for this, I don't want to sell it under 500 gold, let's say. So if someone's got it posted at 499 gold, I will not undercut them. You're welcome to sell it at 499 gold. I think that's ridiculously low. I won't go lower than that. Maximum price is the reverse of minimum price. It's basically that is way too high. It will never sell at that. I'm not going to bother posting it that. That's excessively high. So let's say... Um, let's go with... 3,000 gold and say that's just way too high. That's absolutely insane. And then your normal price is sort of your, if no one's got it stupidly low and no one's got it stupidly high, the normal price is what I really want to sell it at. So for this, let's say that my normal price is 2,350 gold. That's my normal price. Now you have different little mechanics because this is a very detailed add-on. So it's going to say, when something is below the minimum, what should I do with this item? Okay, so someone has this item on the auction house lower than you want to sell it for. What do you want me to do? You've got a whole bunch of different options. You've got don't post the items at all. If someone's got it lower than that price, just leave it alone, don't post it. You can also say ignore auctions below minimum. So it just says, okay, well, they've got it at minimum, so let's just sort of ignore that completely. You've got post at maximum price. You've got post at minimum price and you've got post at normal price. So if you have post at normal price, kind of think of it as your fallback. Generally, I kind of like post at normal price, though you can just ignore auctions below minimum. And then say someone has something posted above minimum, and there's someone who has it posted below minimum. It will undercut the person that has it above minimum and completely ignore the person who has it below minimum. So let's just have it at that for now. And then you can have it set at cancel. Canceling auctions, basically, if someone's undercut you, you cancel it and then you can repost it. And this is saying, well, how, when do I want to cancel it? If I can repost it higher, for example, it's got here. If I can repost it higher than one gold currently. So if I had undercut someone and now I can repost it higher because their auction is no longer there for whatever reason, I can then cancel the auction and then post it at a higher price, and thereby make some more gold. So on an item like this, let's say 
let's not bother reposting higher unless it's like 100 gold, okay? And then you can cancel undercut auctions as well. So if someone's undercut you, you can cancel it and then repost it or do whatever you want with it. And that's pretty much it. You can have some items stay posted if you're cancelling your auctions. I don't really see why you'd want to. It's up to you if you feel that you want some items still there even though you're taking some of them away and posting them at undercut. It's up to you, whatever works for you. I generally just don't use that at all. And that's pretty much all you really, really need to know in terms of setting it up so that you can now use this. And then we're going to go back over to groups. So now we've made a condition, we've gone and we've worked with it, we're going to go back to the group. It's now got that operation or, or condition or whatever you want to call it, it's got the operation there. And now we actually need to add items to this group. So this group is saying, I work with which items, which items do you want me to have in this group and use that sort of price setting with. And what is this thing called? The Stormbreaker Trest Guard. And then you can click that and click add. If you want to add multiple things, you can just go click, 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 click. And then click add. If you find that you don't like something, you can click it again to remove it. You can clear selection to remove everything you've selected. And of course, you can click the other side to move things back across. When an item is in one group, you cannot have it in more than one group, okay? So you can not have this chess guard in five different groups because otherwise the add-on would get confused and it wouldn't make any sense. So once you have added an item to a group, it will no longer show in this section to add. And of course the section is shown, it scans your bags and it goes, okay, what is, what is in a group? What isn't in a group? So it's kind of helpful to also see what do I still have to kind of use this add-on to configure with. And as you go along, you will add more and more things to the groups and you'll have more and more things that you're working with. So now that we've gone and we've added this to the group, let's go and head on over to the auction house and click the auctioning button. And you've got these two things. You've got start post scan and start cancel scan. So let's go with post scan first. It's going to go and scan through my bag, scan through everything that I have and saying, okay, now we need to post items. So let's go and do that. And I'm going to show you a macro in a minute that will allow you to do what I'm about to do. Let's just have it do its thing. It's busy scanning. Do I really need to post anything here? No, 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 no. And it's just sort of scanning still. It's just going to take a little while. I do have quite a lot of stuff. Um, not as much as I usually do because I'm lazy. And it's just finished the scanning. It should actually be going with the chest guard. That's strange. If it's doing it weirdly, you can just click restart and say scan again. Do it work and it'll do it eventually it takes a little while it's not always the most exact thing in the universe there we go Okay, so actually the reason why it wasn't posting the Stormbreaker chess card is because you have to select all the groups that it's working with, and accidentally I didn't notice it was doing that. So you actually have to click on the Stormbreaker chess card group and make sure that it's scanning for that as well. So now that we've selected that, we can start the post scan again, and it will now show because I have now told it to actually look for that, and I was being silly and not ticking that, making sure it was looking for that particular group of things to post, and now it's busy scanning again, and it should show up now. Now that I have put my silliness away and actually found that it wasn't looking for that. And there we go. It's looking for it. It's posting at normal price because there's nothing for me to undercut.
So that's what it's working with. And now you've got the post. Now, when you've got a lot of this sorted out, you might be posting like 600 auctions. You can then bind it to your scroll wheel and then just go whoosh and it will post a whole bunch of stuff at the same time, which is what I just did, but in this case it was only one. And you can do the same thing with cancelling. So if you start a cancel scan, you also have to do the exact same thing with the post scan, except now it's going to be cancelling the auctions and it'll be saying you've been undercut on this, you haven't been undercut on this, there's no reason to under take this off, or whatever it is that it's doing and it's busy scanning everything now. Unfortunately, I've been very, very lazy, so there isn't really very much for it uh, to actually look for. You can see the information it's going for, why it wants to take something off, or why it doesn't want to take something off, and then it will decide on the different things. And you've got the cancel button over there. And I'll show you the macro in a second. I should also have the macro in the description of this video, and if it's not there, then scream at me in all capital letters, because it should be. There we go. Not cancelling, because the auction is below minimum price, and it's busy... I think it's done. And then we've got 20 things to cancel. Different button that I've got it bound to. And there we go, we just cancelled 20 auctions. It's busy doing its thing. And they've just been sent to my mailbox. There we go. So let's open the macro tab. And apparently I still can't spell. And you've got cancel and post. Okay, these are the different macros. Slash click TSM auctioning cancel button and uh, slash click TSM auctioning post button. I will have them in the description so you can just copy and paste them in and have it all good. And then what you can do is you can have a key bound like I have to shift mouse wheel up and shift mouse wheel down. Shift mouse wheel up is my cancel, shift mouse wheel down is my post. You can bind it to whatever you want. You could technically bind it to a button like one, for example, but the thing about one is you'd have to be going like this the entire time. It wouldn't really save any difference, uh, make any difference. You might as well just be clicking. But if you bind it to the scroll wheel, because of the way the scroll wheel works, you'll roll it once and it will basically trigger like 50 times. That's why the scroll wheel is so awesome. So that's why it's better to have it bound to the scroll wheel. We can just hold shift and go shum 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 and kapow! Everything has been posted or cancelled or whatever it is that you wanted to have done. And that is the basics of setting up Trade Skill Master so you can begin using it. I will be working with this quite heavily in my gold making guide. So if you do want to see more detailed stuff in little drips and drabs, that will be in the gold making guide. But this should help you get started and on your way to making lots and lots of gold and hopefully saving you a lot of time in the process. So big thanks to the makers of this add-on. Make sure to show your support. And if you want the add-on, link in the description to go and grab it and snap it up on Curse. And I'm sure they will be much, very, very happy to have seen it. And of course, if you really, really like it, you can always donate to the add-on developers. I'm sure they will be quite chuffed to receive such things. Anyway, thank you for watching. Good luck, have fun, and as always, I shall see you in future videos. Even though I don't say that always, so technically it's not always. But goodbye.